Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here. What do you know it? Just a few days before my birthday shows up. That's right, Thursday, May 2nd. I'm going to be turning 34. Already. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'm as adult as I could be. So, to top it all off, I'm going to do a movie review this week. And I picked this up at Five Below. Just a few weeks ago, um, during spring break, I actually got that along with another DreamWorks movie. But it's called Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Yep, which is based on Peabody's Improbable History by Ted Key, which this was the segment that they played on The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Yeah, back in the 60s. Or late 50s for that matter. But yeah. I saw this movie uh, a long time ago. But I never had a chance to do the review. That's fine. You know, sometimes I'm basically busy most of the time anyway. So I don't always have time to review a movie. But I thought maybe this would be a good idea to review it anyway. Now that I bought the Blu-ray. For five bucks. Yeah, five below... Is a store that's like, um, I guess you could say, sort of a mix between uh, like Hot Topic, Dollar Tree, Big Lots, all these other kinds of stores. But they, even Michaels too, and then they just put them all together. Everything's either from one dollar to five dollars. So every um, every item they have here, like they they have posters, uh, headphones. As I just show you when I did my review of Missing Link. Like tons of, of that. Plus they have those iPhone cases or any other kind of cell phone case. Those USBs. Um, they, they even got toys, games, candy. Yes, yeah, dollar off candy that they got. Like you can get like 10 of them for a dollar. They even got uh, <laughs> t-shirts. All this merchandising that they got, uh, everything. I mean, if, if you go to Five Below, at, at what location has it, you'd be lucky to see how how big this place is. Well, not too big, but it's it's something that you never thought you would see. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit off topic on this one, but that's where I found um, this movie along with another movie, a B movie, that I picked up. So they, they have it inside the bin that has all these DVDs and Blu-rays inside. I, they used to have like a big selection of that too on on the corner, but I think that was probably for a while. I mean, it was the first time I've ever been to Five Below, though the one in Van Nuys and, and the other one in Glendale. So where I am. So that's the... So I thought this was pretty interesting. But anyway... Yeah, th this is the Blu-ray I picked up, once again, and this has all the features, as you can tell, tons of good features here. Um, yeah, it's a combo pack, and um, now, sad to say, the movie could have been a bigger hit when it came out on March 7, 2014, and... It, it underperformed badly at the box office, and yeah, I think it's because of you know what, uh, RoboCop remake coming out. That really pissed me off because this movie could have done so well. Plus, uh, Muppets Most Wanted was coming out too uh, the following week, and I think that was part of the competition that was happening. And other films were coming up as well, like Three Hundred. Uh, the sequel to 300 and several others so it's too bad I I mean this is a good movie it's not good excellent <laughs> excellent movie to come out and it basically pays a tribute to um, the cartoon itself which is based on Peabody's Improbable History by Tech Key and you know, it's about a dog who's uh, highly intelligent, 
He's a anthropomorphic, and he lives with a boy who uh, he adopts. That's right, <laughs> a dog and his boy. And they actually go travel through time, because they are time travelers, on the Wayback Machine. So they get to go to all the other um, places um, by travel through time, and they discover their improbable history. <laughs> right there. So, And of course, Mr. Peabody always has that voice of his. Peabody here. Oh, I'm just doing my yoga. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. But you got a great cast right there doing the voices. So, so um, let's, so yeah, the, so, this was basically the first film that DreamWorks has ever released that's where they bought out um, the Classic Media Library and they changed its name to DreamWorks Classics because well DreamWorks actually wanted to um, help out uh, the company so maybe they'll they'll try to um, you know they'll try to do their own movies from them but sad to say I mean this is the only film they did so far because I know there have been Jay Ward films, like we had the live-action version of The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, we had uh, George of the Jungle, Dudley Do-Right, e even Underdog. <laughs> yeah. But when, when these movies came out, well, they either love it or hate it. Or the way, yeah, the way it turns out. But to me, you know, it doesn't matter. I just enjoy it for what it's worth because I'm familiar with the cartoon and I'd love to see how this turns out. But anyway, let, let's get to this review. Stars Ty Burrell from Modern Family, Max Charles, who's been in movies like, um, like he went on to play the young Peter Parker as a little kid in The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. He was also on the TV show called The Neighbors on ABC, yeah, which I know uh, one of my friends uh, from Inclusion Films had worked on it as as the PA, and would later um, wound up appearing on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only lasted two seasons, Sally. Ariel Winter, also from Modern Family. <laughs> What do you know? Now we got two actors uh, from Modern Family to be part of it. <laughs> Stephen Colbert, yeah, who has his own talk show on CBS, which I know he was from The Daily Show. He also did a movie from DreamWorks before, too, called uh, uh, Monster vs. Aliens. Leslie Mann, which, of course, uh, Judd Apatow's wife, but she's been in a lot of stuff. As we all know. Allison Jenny. Yep, from Juno. Ten Things I Hate About You. And the TV show Mom. And many others. <laughs> Steven Tabaski. Yes. Who has been in a lot of stuff. like Such as uh, <laughs> Spaceballs. Which is a small role. Um, he was in an episode of Seinfeld. He was also in the movie... Groundhog's Day, <laughs> and so what is even the, the movie? Yeah, even the movie Joss and Sam. Stanley Tushy, yep, a lot of stuff that he's been in, including the, the Terminal. Patrick Warburton, yes, from Seinfeld, he played David Putty, and he went on to do voice acting with. Um, with Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, you know, doing the voice of Buzz Lightyear at the takeover for Tim Allen. Appeared in a lot of stuff, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. And he's also recently in the new um, Lemmy Snicket's The Series of Fortune Events uh, TV series from Netflix with Neil Patrick Harris on, on the show. Zach Coulson. Dennis Haysburg from 24, and as well as Navy Seals and Heat, several others. Lila Birch, Karen Bra, Joshua Rush, 
and Thomas Lennon. It's written by Craig Wright, again based on Peabody's Improbable History by Tech He, and it's directed by Rob Minkoff, who's the co-director of The Lion King. Yes, the original Lion King from Disney back in 1994. The movie begins when we meet a gifted, anthropomorphic, and highly intelligent dog named Mr. Peabody, voiced by Ty Perel, who lives in a high, um, high story penthouse in New York City, New York, <laughs> which he actually raises his adopted human son, who's a seven year old named Sherman, voiced by Max Charles, as he tutors him by traveling through history using the, the time machine called the Wayback, which is W A B A C. So once they were there, they visit Mary Antoinette and Bersalis uh, during the French Revolution in 1789, which they're getting caught by the Reign of Terror. So, yes, and this is where she just led all the entire uh, crew. You know, we all know the phrase, let them eat cake. So, suddenly uh, Peabody is nearly being sent to the Gullotine to be executed by Maximilian our best parade, but suddenly escapes uh, with Sherman through the Paris sewers. Yeah, in France. So, once they went straight to the present day, Sherman attends at, you're going to love this, Susan B. Anthony's school on his very first day, but his knowledge was to, to actually uh, find out about the nature of George Washington's uh, cherry tree antidote which leads to a fight of one of the classmates and that turned out to be a bully who's a girl named Penny Peterson yeah, a blonde girl who's a brat uh, voiced by Ariel Winter which actually happened when she actually called Sherman a dog just when she found uh, the dog whistle that yeah, Peabody had brought in just you know, just to call for attention. Because <laughs> after she she treats him like a dog, that's what that's when he starts to put him in a chokehold, and after that, he actually bit her in the arm. So Peabody's been called in by Principal Purdy, of course, is voiced by Stephen Tobolsky, which then. We lead to Mrs. Gunion, who's a child protective service agent, voiced by Allison Jenny. So she suspects that Sherman's behavior is due to being raised by a dog and plans to visit their home to investigate, where he is basically an unfit parent. So I knew this was going to be a problem. So at that point on, Peabody then invites Penny and her parents. Paul and Patty, yeah, both voiced by uh, Stephen Colbert and Leslie Mann, over for dinner just to re reconcile just before Mrs. Gunian arrives. You know, just just to like you know do some chatting, talking, you know, just have a good meal and maybe do like a dance party or any other. Uh, Sherman to take Penny into his room and then. He basically was explaining about that. He actually did went on just knowing about all the history, but but Penny suddenly calls him a liar, claiming about the first hand knowledge of history. So, in spite of uh, Peabody's contrastory instructions here, and you know, just actually warning him not to mention about the way back time machine. Well. Apparently, uh, Sherman suddenly uh, spilled the beans and decided to find out that yes, they do have a time machine. And that's when he decided to take uh, Penny around to show proof about that he knows about all the history that's happening. Anyway, Sherman took uh, Penny into the past where she stayed at ancient Egypt in 1332 BCE to marry King Tut, which this is where it becomes a problem <laughs> because that's when King Tut's uh, 
son decided that he he wanted to uh, marry uh, Penny, which that's what's going to lead to. <laughs> but what happens was, uh, <laughs> in order for them to get married or to be together, um, they had to do a ritual, which that's going to be <laughs> something that that isn't what what Penny expected it. So anyway, so anyway, Sherman had returned to get Mr. Peabody back to, for help, and but Peabody suddenly hypnotized the, the Petersons just so they could retrieve Penny. So once they went back inside the time machine, you know, way back, they they tried to get Penny out of there, and they did. But then the way back was running out of power. So they stop at Renaissance Florence at 1508, where they meet Leonardo da Vinci, yeah, and Mona Lisa. Yeah, this is where he was actually working on the painting of Mona Lisa, trying to, to give her to smile, but no such luck until <laughs> Peabody suddenly helps out and just <laughs> crashes through one of his paintings, and that's when <laughs> yeah, Mona Lisa started to laugh, and that's when and she smiled. And then um, Penny and Sherman suddenly explored Da Vinci's attic, and that's where they found a flying machine, where they flew around all the way in, all the way through the city of Florence, Italy. And then, which Penny suddenly goes Sherman to to fly, and that's where he starts to learn how to fly, even though he doesn't know how. But he did it and tries to avoid crashing, but that was too late. <laughs> But Da Vinci was suddenly thrilled how the device really worked. But Peabody was very upset that Sherman was trying to risk his safety. But, of course, he did destroy the artifact. That's very historical. But by resuming to go back to the journey, they wound up inside a black hole in time forces, which is basically time consuming them, which led to the emerging landing during the Trojan War of 1184 BCE. But upset learning about what Mrs. Gronian is going to do to him, Sherman suddenly winds up joining the army in Keynes' uh, Agamemnon. Yeah, this was, which was voiced by Patrick Warburton. <laughs> um, going straight to the Trojan House, and during those final parts of the Trojan War, Penny winds up being trapped inside the horse as it rolls towards a cliff. Peabody suddenly rescues her, but apparently dies during the attempt. Yes, sadly. So, so then Sherman decided to pilot uh, the Wayback Machine just so he can get uh, Mr. Peabody back for help and to help to fix everything that's happening. So as Sherman and Penny tries to explain the situation, we begin to see. What do you know? Another Sherman, as well as another Penny, and another <laughs> Peabody. So, this is where it gets worse. When Mr. Grunian attempts to collect both Shermans, as well as Peabody, and they suddenly merge together. And even worse, she was about to Peabody suddenly was being taken away and wants up biting the Grunian's arm. That's when she calls the NYPD. Just when, just when both uh, Sherman and Peabody decide to to escape by going through the Wayback Machine, and that's where the black hole was you know, appearing in New York City, and that's where. It, you see all of the history that they went into are, are falling all the way down into the streets just as the police and everyone else were arriving to go after yeah at least, at least a collision and then because of the space-time consuming them so Mr. Peabody crash lands the way back in the Grand Army Plaza where 
Historical figures and police officers quickly surround them, while Goonian calls animal control to go out to grab a Peabody. And Sherman explains that all of them, all this was his fault, so they're trying to find a way to actually fix all this stuff, so that way everything can go back to normal. And it did. So once they finally did that, they all, all the, the historical figures, everyone around, they finally went all the way up back into the black hole. So now, which uh, Kane, the Agamemnon, actually took uh, Mrs. Uh, Gwynian <laughs> all the way up, too. So that way you can get married. And everyone else is around. So things were back to normal. And, and now Sherman suddenly returns to school started to make friends with Penny and everyone else and well Peabody suddenly has Sherman back and now you know he gets to do whatever he wants you know become as smart and intelligent as ever and also gets to use the Wayback Machine whenever he needs it I mean especially with Sherman around too he can do whatever he can and that's uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman and I really love the film and definitely amazing CGI animation that they really put up with uh, by DreamWorks so they really did an awesome job putting it together it's hilarious too I mean you got a great cast joining in to provide the voices and you could tell they were having fun I always love those moments a lot of funny moments that they put into it as I mentioned already um, and I, I know that um, Ty Burrell had to practice doing the voice of Mr. Peabody by actually watching all the cartoons in order to get it right so I'm glad he actually had the knowledge to do so because but then again it is kinda easy to uh, to do that voice of the dog so <laughs> I'm Mr. Peabody here, I'm with my son, Sherman, and we're going to go straight to the Wayback Machine to go back in time to do our impalpable history, that sort of thing. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm just coming up with my, my words. Um, anyway, you got great characters, of course, Mr. Peabody and Sherman together as a team, even though they're father and son, no doubt about it. I mean, Penny was a brat, granted. I mean, she started out as a bully and everything. Not just uh, treating him like a dog, but in the end, you know, Penny learned his lesson. Um, Penny learns her lesson and now finally gets along with Sherman. And, <laughs> and of course, you got all the other characters joining in once they travel back in time. You know, like you get... Uh, Mary Antoinette, you get Maximum, uh, Maximilian Robespierre, Kane the Altomanion, Leonardo da Vinci, Kane Tuts, all these guys. Else. And of course, they can even throw in some other presidents too, even George Washington. <laughs> so, it's really cool. But hey, I, I always watched uh, the TV show when, whenever it was on as a segment on Rocky and Bullwinkle, and it's always fun to watch them. They they later had their own series too that they joined in. Uh, just when Rocky and Bullwinkle was continuing to go through its run in the late fifties and and mid sixties, because the, hey, I, I started watching these when when we rented them on home video even though I did sort of watch them on Nickelodeon later on. Yeah, because Nickelodeon used to play these. And then later Cartoon Network did too. <laughs> and also WGN America. <laughs> yeah, remember? So yeah. Um, and they even have a TV series uh, for Netflix, um, which only had four seasons, so not a bad run. They had Chris Parnell replacing Burrell to do the voice of Mr. Peabody, so it sounds exactly alike. 
and it's they just use um, digital animation try to which I know it doesn't look nearly as good as the animation they used in the 60s but they're trying their best because I, I know DreamWorks after their purchase with classic media you know they're starting to bring back all the classics in new form but they would still own the rights to them through um, Comcast because Universal bought uh, DreamWorks Animation. So, there you go. <laughs> and yes, the TV series is now on Universal Kids, so if you have cable or satellite, you'll be able to watch it. Um, if they still play it on Netflix, you'll probably be watching it, but I don't think it's on Netflix at this moment on. Uh, they did the score by Danny Elfman, so I, I could definitely uh, hear the 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 tune that try to become as orchestrated as possible, and some great effects put into it. Seeing that it's all CGI, so I, I love how they actually try to make it look really cool. I love how they make the Wayback Machine more like a uh, <laughs> a spear, a red spear. And love the writing and everything that went into it. So, gotta say, uh, DreamWorks really did an awesome job putting the, the story back together. So they know what they were doing when they adapted um, definitely the most popular cartoon from from that time. Yeah, I just wish it was a hit though. It should have been. I mean, out of its 140 my uh, under its 400. Under its $145 million, it only made $275.7 million worldwide, but domestically, it only made, uh, it actually grossed at $57 million. So, really sad. And I know, it should have done so much better. But it's not like it's going to get a sequel, though. I mean, granted speaking, I mean, it worse was a standalone movie. It's just we probably would have gotten some more um, animated films uh, that's part of uh, classic media. You know, we could have had an animated uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. We could have had um, all these other ones that follow from from Jay Ward. And I think this would have helped, actually. But hey, at least we got the, the TV series that follows, so that's what made it up for it. But, hey... <laughs> But again, I love the voice acting. You know, Ty Burrell did an awesome job portraying the role. Um, so was Max Charles uh, portraying Sherman. Penny, you know, voiced by Ariel Winter, did an awesome job as well. And so is the rest of the cast, like Stephen Colbert, Leslie Mann, Alison Jenny, Stephen Tobosky, Patrick Warburton, still the show. Uh, Stanley Tucci, Dennis Hadeberg, and all the rest. So. Yeah, even the Wayback Machine had um, a female uh, voiceover telling you the destination, where to go to. Yeah, Lila Birch did that. And you just get to see all the cameos and everyone. So. <laughs> anyway, but check it out. It, it's fun. It really is. And I, I know it's a dead giveaway, but I just like to talk more. So. But anyway, that's Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and I give the movie five stars. <laughs> As you say so yourself. <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.